Welcome back to the shop. I'm going to talk about safety, which is sort of a weird subject for this channel. I am not known for for being the safest person in the world. However, recently my little brother and I were tearing and breaking down some old windows and he sliced the crap out of his finger. I didn't take a picture of it because I'm a little squeamish about big cuts. But he he managed to take a pretty good sized chunk out of this, r roughly this part of his finger. I think it was down to the bone? Anyway, he probably got into the muscle though, right? Yeah, he got into the muscle. So, he was using a glove. I, I will try to find the actual glove that he was wearing when he cut himself. And, and the, the, the scary thing about it is, you know, this is right in the middle of this whole COVID thing. So you really don't want to take a trip to the, to the hospital or to the whatever place would stitch you up. So... Luckily, I had a first aid kit with some iodine wipes and whatnot and, and some bandages and some tape and he was able to sort of button himself up and we didn't have to go anywhere, which was nice. But that brought to light that the gloves that he had, you know, weren't adequate. They, not, not in, gloves are not going to protect you from everything, but I've done a little bit of research in the time between now and then and I'm going to try to share with you what I learned. And that, that is not going to be just from the, what I've read from the literature but from what we've learned in practice so far. So I will try to find that original glove that he cut, and then I'm going to come back and discuss the, the positives and negatives of these different types of gloves. And I want to show you these before they actually get really used. This first set of gloves, I think, was $12 for 8 pairs, or $12 for 12 pairs, quite a few. Uh, and then I have another version um, that's in the truck that maybe I'll grab a pair of those. And those are relatively cheap work handling gloves. These are probably rated for handling boxes. Uh, these are these are uh, A4 rated gloves, which we'll talk about. As you can see, these are A9 rated gloves. And there's, I'll put a chart up of what these, what this A4 and A9 represents. And through through use of these gloves, we'll give you some feedback. Clay will give you some feedback. Chances are of what the difference is working with the A9s versus the A4s. I would assume, you know, my hypothesis at this point is that the the, the higher the number, the, the more cut resistant, the probably the, the less comfortable. There'll probably be less dexterity or less mobility with that. That is an assumption at this point in time, but we will use them and I'll come back and let you know uh, what the results are and, and Clay will give you some feedback on what he thinks of the glove injured hand at all. So, so the reason I'm talking about gloves is that on day one of this whole COVID shutdown thing, my little brother Clay sliced his hand pretty good. He, he was wearing, I believe it was a set of mechanics gloves, and the glass that we were working with, he, you know, we'd been working with it for a couple hours, no problems, he just grabbed it and it cut right through the glove and into his finger and down, you know, very deep. I think you could, I don't know if you could see bone or not, but I didn't get pictures of it probably wouldn't want to see it anyway it was pretty gross but he healed up fine he didn't have to go to the doctor didn't need stitches or anything like that so that's good but it got me thinking about gloves and, and at that point i decided i'm going to make a video and try to share what i've learned over the you know since that point in time so when you look at gloves you're going to see several different numbers on the back the en388 that's sort of like a classification similar to the ans ansi standard um i forget exactly what that stands for but it's a standards um and uh, uh, industry standard type and there's two sets of numbers here you can see four five four four so the EN rating is you know, four five four four what does that mean here's the chart for the EN rating and this is abrasion resistance is the first number cut resistance tear and puncture and then those ratings for whatever reason are rated 1 to 4, 1 to 5, and then the rest are 1 to 4. Why they ch chose those rankings, those those proportions, why there's 5 as opposed to 4 over there, it's a mystery to me, and I don't know why. And now, they've sort of added to it, apparently the new markings are going to have extra de demarcations on there that say, you know, the cut test, there's an A through F rating. I think that's a higher, like F is a higher rated impact. I think I saw a set of mechanics leather gloves would be F rated, and the F rating goes to nine. We're not talking about that. We're just gonna the stuff I have is all pertaining to the A rating. Again, maybe I'll do another video later on. 
And then impact protection, none of the gloves that I have offer any, you know, any identifiable impact protection. So what's the difference when we see these numbers? The, I would assume that the density on the, the weave would be tighter on something to increase the, the puncture resistance. You can see that that might be obvious here. Um, and then, you know, in the case of these gloves, you can almost see through these. There's, there's arguably no protection with these. It's, it's almost like a stocking kind of material or thin set of dress socks. Similarly, these other, other gloves. And you, I think you can feel it, the tactile thing. Of course, that doesn't translate well on a YouTube video. But that's what the, the microscope camera is going to be for. So let me try to tidy up the workbench a little bit and get the my microscope fired up and we'll take a look and, and see what the, the weave looks like on this. All right, so here's the setup. Let me digress for one second. And I didn't cover, and I'm not really sure how to, how to integrate the two things. The, the two classification ratings, we, we covered the, the EN rating and the, the four digit numbers there. But then there's also, we're gonna have another rating which is gonna be the ANSI rating. And then that is broken out across nine different categories ranging from A1 light hazards down to A9 with the, the high hazards. So we have that these D-Rock gloves, these have been good gloves also, the Dex Fit are nice. All these gloves have their own purpose but we'll uh, get these under the microscope. For now I've just sort of arbitrarily chosen a set of gloves. I believe these were relatively cheap. I will find what I paid for them. I think I bought a 10 pack or 12 pack for you know, a dollar or two for each set of gloves. These are uh, 4122 gloves, I believe. The, uh, the sister to that one has a little bit easier to make out. But what I have oops, set up over on the side is my tablet with a machinist ruler, and those are 64th inch in increments. And you can see that the weave on that Get the microscope out of the way. Isn't necessarily uh, well. There's no relative, but you'll see in, in the subsequent videos or in the subsequent shots that the the weave on this pattern does not appear to be as tight as some of the other gloves with the higher rating. And this this 4122, and we'll go back and see that. You know, it's got a relatively high abrasive abrasive qual quality of four. The lowest cut. You know the lower end of the tear and puncture resistance, so that four one two two. So those are cheap gloves, but but these are what I use most of the time. If I'm not working with glass, these have served me quite well. Now here's a set of mechanics gloves, and on the mechanics gloves you can see that you can see right through those suckers. It is a, a completely different kind of weave, and. And I think that I'm not I'm not making an argument for one glove over the other in, in most cases. I'm just saying that you know this this glove might have its purposes. It might you know heat rating isn't indicated in this. You know it's if it is it's not apparent to me. But these mechanics gloves for my uses are good when I'm working on something that's hot. So so I think that's the utility for these. But there's no real abrasion resistance. But when you pull the tag out of here, we can see. We got 2121X. And then going back over, I don't, again, I don't know what the X means. I've changed the notation from this point. So 2121, you know, pretty much low on every front abrasion cut, tear, and puncture. You know, particularly bad at cut and puncture protection, which is, you know, evidenced by that pattern on there. And, and on the face of these gloves, the, all the other gloves are dipped into something. This has got a, you know, a different material sewn into it. It is not the rubber nitrile kind of glove. It's almost like a, a faux leather. Let's find another glove. All right, this is probably going to be similar to the mechanics glove in terms of the protection. I cannot make out the the rating on this glove anymore. The the back is so thin. It just it's got to be probably not right on the puncture scale. And in terms of the It's just so thin, it's almost like a, a fish net or fish seine. There would be no 
puncture resistance to this at all. So I guess not only is the, the, the tightness of the weave important, but then the thickness, you know, the, and I think the, the rubber, in terms of protection, I believe that would be a durometer, and I, I wouldn't know how to test that or wouldn't have the ability to test that. So these gloves are, are cheap and probably less, um, you know, less safe than the other gloves, but they're, they're you know, cheap and you can scatter them around over there, everywhere. So in my truck, I have a set of these. In my workbench, I have a set of these. They're all over the place, and I think that no matter what the protection rating is for the glove, some glove is better than no glove. So, so in terms of economics, if price is an issue and you can't have, you know, sets of $15 gloves laying around everywhere, you probably can have, you know, $2 gloves laying around most places. So, all right, I think I've got two more that I want to cover. All right, so now we're into the D-Rock gloves. And these have a, an almost non-woven property. They, they are very thick. They, in terms of the sweatiness in your hand, it's really hard to tell. When you're out there working, I, I don't, I think they all are a little stifling and, and your hands get wet. I take some foot powder and put them in the gloves in between when I'm wearing them just to keep your things dried out a little bit. But these are far, far thicker um, than the other ones. You can see that as I squeeze that together, there's the sixteenth of an inch as opposed to squeezing this together, there's... You know, it, it looks similar, but they, trust me, there's quite a bit of difference. <clears throat> the the rubber, the dipped part of this, these all seem about the same to me. I really can't tell the difference. I would assume that the fabric underneath it is where the the, the durability comes from. So, again, a big assumption on my part. Um, and finally, here's a uh, set of the Dex Fit. These are. These are great gloves, like the D-Rocks. They, uh, again, probably slightly warmer than the other ones. Um, but look at the look at the weave on that. It's just, it's impressive. It really is. I think that whoever can design these gloves and the machines that makes these is, you know, a magician in my mind. It just seems like magic that they can make these things for as cheap as they do. The, I, I guess, you know, now that I'm sitting here looking at these, the area of protection the gloves all seem to have a similar a similar you know amount of finger protection in terms of the dipped area um, I guess that would deviate slightly with the mechanics glove just because of the manufacturing type well let me let me cut some gloves up we'll see if we can have any sort of a test. This is not going to be scientific or too analytical, but some of these gloves are chowdered. Uh, I don't want to tear up gloves that, are, that I'm still using, but I've got some that are beyond their useful life or cheap enough that I don't mind just dis destroying them. So I guess maybe, well, let me just figure out how to destroy these. In terms of frequency, the, the tool that injures me the most in the shop is probably a screwdriver. I, I know better, but sometimes in the in the sake of expediency, I try to, you know, just pry something or push something or whatever with a screwdriver, and I end up invariably, you know, stabbing myself, impaling myself in the hand. I think, to be fair, I'm going to do two things. I, I, I think that, you know, getting scarred and getting, you know, your, the back of your hand abraded is, you know, a real thing for me, because these are not bad, but uh, you can see that I do get nicked up. So but I'm going to try a screwdriver and poking it through the back of the glove and then maybe through the finger and we'll see how that goes. And hopefully that there will be something, uh, you know, something that shows through the through the camera. And, and let's see if I can not stab myself for the sake of YouTube. So that that went through there, you know, with, with some undetermined level of force relatively easily. And then through this part, much, much, much tougher. I can't, you know, without really, really hammering on that, I think that's a, an unrealistic test. So that's, that's quite tough in terms of the puncture. So let's try the mechanics glove. That, that almost no, no effort at all. It made it right through the back of the glove. Through the front, through the front quite easily. To be fair, these gloves have been used, so it's probably worn down a bit, but you're not always going to have new gloves on, so uh, it's not a fair comparison.
but the I do not think that they were disingenuous. The rating on this glove, we remember, is a 21-21. So pretty much low on all fronts on the abrasion, cut, tear, and puncture resistance. So a, not, not a protective glove in terms of puncture. Um, you think these are 41-22s? These I would expect a similar, similar result if this classification is the same in terms of puncture. Um, yeah, this, this should have the same puncture resistance as the mechanics glove. That, that went through no problem at all. Uh, and, and relatively easily through the thumb. So, At least I'm seeing some consistency on, on those fronts. Um, I didn't cover this set of gloves. I, I, they didn't have a rating on them, and I don't think it's uh, that they're anything more than just comfort gloves. Um, I think these came from Ace Hardware. But a little bit tough to poke in the back of that one. And, and very durable. So even though these aren't rated, these Ace Hardware gloves are, are seem to be pretty good. Um, for the sake of YouTube, the D-Rock, these are the high puncture rating. Ugh. You know, those don't want to, there's no, no puncture going on there. And then through the fingers, that's going to be relatively tough. These have got a lot of hours on them, so. So I think that we can at least trust the puncture rating of these. Um, that seems to be, you know, indicative of a, you know, the higher the number, the the more puncture resistant they are. Now let's try cutting these. All right, undoubtedly this test is going to be you know, not not very realistic, but but for the sake of consistency, what I'm going to do is I've got this uh, glazer's knife. It's a a hack knife, I believe, and they use this to cut glazing out of windows or the old putty out of that they used to glaze windows with. I'm going to Set a finger on here, and then try as predictably, like without imparting any force, try to get a decent range of motion, and see if anything happens. Uh, again, this is not a project form video, but we're just looking for some sort of examples. All right, I'm not sure that that test was an overkill, but it obviously wiped the finger off of this little piggy. Um, this one, I again, it, the consistency of my swinging, it, it obviously you know made its way through that glove pretty pretty easily. Uh, here is the Ace Hardware glove. It seems to have a little bit more protection on the end. That, jeez, whatever these things, Showa Atlas three hundred. I'm liking these gloves. Let's see what it takes to cut the finger off. Oh. Right, it took a couple whacks, but I was able to get through it. Oh, what else do we have? These. These are the 4122s. Um, you know, very, very low on the cut protection. I went right through. All right, for what I do for YouTube, these gloves are still good, but I'd, I'd hate to not chinch on this one. So, all right, here's 15 bucks for you guys. All right, so that left a pretty good crease there, but I, I'm not saying your finger wouldn't be smashed and throbbing pretty bad, but you would have, you know, a finger, ostensibly. Let me, let me try again, a little harder. Wow, it's, it's leaving some good creases, but, you know, really, really good. Uh, 
I can almost see some fiber inside of. Ah, sorry, I make horrible videos. All right, there we are. I really had to reef on that thing, and and I think it, it almost looks like a metallic fiber that's woven into that. That's just amazing. Um, I'm not going to cut through these because these are the same rating, I believe, the, the cut cut rating. And they're brand new, uh, so I'm just not going to ruin good stuff. But uh, but I think um, for, for this video, that's uh, illustrative of what's going on. Um, hold on. While we're cutting things up. Right. Since I've ruined these things, let's let's take a set of shears. Just a set of whisks, you know, just uh, tin snips. And we'll see if they... Oh yeah. Well these are designed to cut, so probably not a fair a fair test. Yeah. Those are good scissors. Let me find something else. Alright, here's an old pocket knife that I salvaged some parts off of. It's that's relatively sharp. Sharp enough to you know um but a, a dull knife can be more dangerous, you know how that saying goes. But let's try to take a couple couple cuts on some gloves and see what happens. Let's start off with the arguably the weakest glove here. So that that didn't fare very well for the pocket knife test. That I, I got a little bit of a cut on there, but but pretty good. Let's try. Let's try these good Ace Hardware gloves. The show is... These are... These are great gloves. I don't... I don't remember. I'll, I'll see if I can find these, but... Yeah, I'm gonna buy more of those, I think. Um... These were the... Like, mystery rating gloves. I don't expect much out of these. Breezed right through it. And these are the 4122s. Yeah. Those are pretty pretty easy. Um so let's I guess the the tear was probably the screwdriver test, puncture test, those are probably one of the same. The cut test, I think, you know, we, we've seen that the higher the rating, the better they do, obviously. And abrasion resistance, that's going to be a tough one. Um, so for abrasion resistance, I figure the best tool I have for it is the belt sander. I'm going to try to keep this as, as simple for me as possible in terms of editing. I'm going to successively go through and touch the gloves, keeping them as much of a consistent rate of pressure as I can up against the sander and try to keep it in frame uh, until I see it break through. And then when I do that, I'm going to go to the next glove. So whatever glove is on here the longest is the one that wins. And I will, you know, hopefully I'll be able to at least recognize what it is, uh, which glove that is. This is the, uh, again, hopefully I'll try to pull these up on Amazon or wherever I bought them from. <coughs> Excuse me, show you what they are. So I, uh, we'll start with these. Well, that was no competition at all. The I would say from best to worst, the D Rock, these A9s, outstanding. They really, they really stood up against this. Uh, the next best were these 
Ace Hardware show us. Again, these are these were not very expensive. Again, I'll do my best to find out these, but these have held up quite well through the tests. Uh, the cheaper gloves, you know, just a matter of a fraction of a second. I, I as you might have seen, I I sort of favored the the edges of the the fingers, and and I think that I don't I don't know if it's any thinner, but anyway, that's just the way I tended to grab these. Uh, these these other gloves just it breezed the sander breezed right through those and the mechanics gloves you know they're pretty they look like a tennis shoe they you know they they're appealing they got my attention and made me buy them but again not for for cut as abrasion puncture resistance that is not what these gloves i think are for they're just you know not my favorite um, for those for those aspects so i think that's i think that's about it let me um let me break the camera down and just do a little bit of follow-up okay so the higher rating these these a9 and the the, the five rated these the, the highest rated en rating and the, the highest a and si rating those are outstanding gloves they are more expensive but they're they're great um, these ace hardware gloves you know outstanding and the in these other gloves i'll again try to post links of, of what i paid for these and where i got them they're good on their own, right? For lighter duty work, for non-glass oriented things, for things where you're not going to get punctured or whatever. These are great because you can scatter them around everywhere. So that's my two cents on, on the glove stuff. And, and again, I hope that the, the classification rating, you know, I hope I, you know, explain that as, be as well as I could without boring you to death. So again, the, the, the EN rating, you want the highest numbers you can for the toughest glove. And then for the A rating, same thing. And there's other factors that, you know, probably other better information on YouTube. So that's it for the gloves. Now I'm just going to talk a little bit about some other projects in the shop if you're interested. All right, as for the rest of the shop, I have been bringing over tools. And I've got a lot of little things that need to be put away yet. Um, you know, and I still have a lot more tools to bring over. I'm working on several things at one time. I am, I've got a golf cart at my father's house. This is a golf cart. It needs some new cables, so I'm making those and waiting on more parts. I have the forklift. It is back together, and the, the shroud is in. We've got... Clay's made great progress, and he's been an outstanding help on this thing. He's done the, the, almost every bit of the work on this shroud, and it really is nice. So we're doing a couple new hoses. New shroud, new radiator. I'm waiting on bottom radiator hoses. Those are going to be a chore. So beyond the forklift, the golf cart, the moving, I also have the wheel horse. Looks good without the deck on it. I am waiting on new blades. As you can see, I've got, got my money's worth out of these. Uh, I, I never changed them when I bought the machine, so most of that wear is from the former owner. So, so that's it. You know, between the the lawnmowers, the forklifts, the golf carts, gloves, my regular job. <laughs> it's, it's coming along. It's been busy. And, uh, and some other things I didn't finish. Uh, this is actually my, uh, I just put this on here. This is my grandfather's. This is a number, number, what is that? 104.4 Charles Parker. I think it's a Chaz, is it Chaz Parker? Or Charles Parker. Um, Meridian. Connecticut, outstanding vice, just an outstanding vice. It is, it is just so true and, and plumb. It doesn't pinch or wobble or anything like that. It's very tight. It could use a real restoration, and I look forward to doing that sometime. But for now, I've got maybe some hydraulic work I'll need to do on the forklift, and I'll need a good vice. Not the sturdiest table, but practical at this point in time. So, anyway, lots of little things. I hope that you, uh, I hope that the, the microscope camera was was somewhat helpful today. It is not necessarily the easiest thing to use um, while you're holding a camera. I'm hoping I'll get better at that over time. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to quit rambling now. So hopefully the glove video is helpful, and I'm hopeful that that some of the video that I'm getting, I'm getting video of, of each little thing. Uh, so I've got some stockpiled, some forklift video and odds and ends video. So. Maybe I'll have to start a mosh type thing. But but anyway, all right, I'm really going to quit now. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I hope you're having a good day.